Welcome. I'm Halcyon, and this is Hug Nation. The topic today is, we're all pink on the inside. Which is good, because I have been pink identified for 14, 15 years, something like that. I've had pink hair for most of my adult life, or midlife, whatever you would call this. And over the course of that time, I have developed a reputation based on pink. I have built companies that have you know pink branding. My brand is pink. I've got a pink motorhome. I run Pink Heart Camp or help to run Pink Heart Camp. Um, I am on a pink hair dye box. And it all began as a kind of attempt to confront societal norms and realizing that pink hair was not acceptable on men. And pink as a color in general was not one that a man can embrace without people assuming that they're gay or something is amiss with the fl flagrant disregarding of the color spectrum rules. And that's why I really got excited about pink. And initially, it was, it was, it was that kind of anti-macho stance. Like, you're going to tell me what colors I can and can't like? Well, I'll tell you. And so it began with Burning Man outfits and then dyed my hair. And after came back from Burning Man one year, went to a trade show on behalf of a client, was worried that the client would be upset that I showed up as their representative with pink hair. And within 24 hours, so many people remembered meeting the pink haired guy that my, my client was like, definitely keep the pink. And that became my, my, my beginning of being professionally pink and I have been pink since then. My, my name, you know, in most of my digital worlds is Halcyon Pink. So, I'm not sure if you are listening to this on iTunes, you may not be, be sensing the thick irony of what I'm talking about because I am currently not pink. My hair is whitish and salt and pepper. My beard is whitish and salt and pepper. I am pinkless. And it's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, it's a, it's a weird feeling to have this kind of history. Like there's so many times that I've responded to, you know, the, the questions and comments and pink is a part of my identity, a part of my brand. So much so that over the course of the years, there have been many times when I have uh, like intentionally took an, uh, taken a break from being pink. Because when you're so identified with something there gets to be this point where you're like, is this a choice or an obligation? Am I, do I still like being pink or do I need to be pink? Or is there an expectation of me to be pink? And so there were a few years where, you know, when January 1st came around, I shaved my head and stayed, you know, like a little one guard with let my, at the time, my brown hair shine or just barely peek out and then was brown for a little bit. My general rule that I have followed over the years is that if I look in the mirror and it feels like me, then carry on. But if it doesn't feel like me or I feel like I'm playing a role or it's a mask or it's a facade or it's, you know, it's, it's, I'm doing it because I have to, or I look in the mirror and go, look, this, this, this is a look that doesn't, I don't know, that doesn't look like me me, then I make a change. So often when I bleach my hair, I will, you know, my hair will be white or white-ish until the roots grow out. And sometimes I just, I look in the mirror and go, oh, I kind of like it this way. And I keep it until it no longer looks good. And then I go pink. And in the last couple of years, I've done some blue and then does some blue and pink and some, you know, unicorn mixes of colors. And most recently, I've been sticking with the white and then added this beard. So it's, it gets especially challenging for me when I 
have a Burning Man event that's coming up. Because I have this whole library of Burning Man tips and tricks videos, and so many people in the Burning Man community know me as this pink-haired guy. You know, I'm with Pink Heart Camp, the pink haired guy, I do Hug Nation, pink, 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 pink RV, the Hugmobile. So, but, so, and I like that connection. I like that, that recognition based on these things that I've done, based on a video that someone saw years ago, and then they see me at the burn and go, oh, hey, you taught me how to fur a bike. I love that. I love connecting with people based on this thing. And I think that if I, if I, you know, let go of my branding, a fear of mine is that I will miss out on some of those connections. Interestingly enough, I learned about this kind of the fun of this consistent branding at my first burn. There was a guy, I think his name was Christian, but he had a head to toe lime green fur outfit. Now, it must have been blazing hot inside, but if you saw him on day one and you saw him on day four, there was no question that you would remember this person. And I remember when that, you know, I had, I had all these different outfits picked out and all these different looks, and I was like, huh, this guy sticks with one outfit and it allows him to build upon every connection over the course of the week instead of, you know, being fresh and a, a new face to people all the time. That being said, there's an absolute reason and joy to being fresh and, and not recognized for what you've done in the past. When I was in college, uh, I went to a small school, like 1,600 people, I think it was smaller than my high school, and I would talk to friends that would go to big universities, and I, 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 I wondered what it would be like to have some of the anonymity to just, you know, go out to a party, make an ass of yourself, and not have to um, live with that behavior for the rest of your college career. And the same is true with, you know, having a consistent look and being remembered. You've got to live with your actions and build up a reputation. So it, it is, as I have attended Burning Man events, there have been times when I've been very comfortable being not pink and then go, gosh, I really... I don't want to. I don't want to miss out on all the the goodwill that I've built up as the pink guy. Maybe I'm maybe I'm off base. Maybe I have not built up goodwill, but it it, it feels like it. And the people who are angry at the pink-haired guy just I think just stay away from him. It's like a moat, you know. It invites people in or it repels them. So. Um, It's been interesting, and the reason why I'm thinking about this now is because, one, I'm definitely in a chapter where I am not feeling pink. Visibly pink, the color pink, is not something that I feel needs to be a part of my visual identity right now. However, the project that I am the most dedicated to right now and putting the most time and energy in is The Pink Path. This coaching program that is got pink right in the name. And so one of the things that I initially, I started as a, it was a 12, or it is a 12 week program that I was doing one-on-one -on -one with people. And my intention was to, after I explain the lessons one-on-one -on -one with this first group, then record myself doing these lessons so that I can make it available to more people and easier to scale in the future. However, over the course of these 12 weeks, I. I was never pink. And so I kept like in the back of my mind, I'm like, I can't, I don't want to record the pink path videos during this brief chapter of my 15 year life when I'm not pink. Like you would think I should be pink, you know, if, 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 if I'm going to be pink ever, I should be pink during the recording of these videos. So I kept waiting to record them until I went pink again. And it, I just kept looking in the mirror and it kept feeling like, nope, this feels like me. It feels weird, and I sometimes go, I can't believe this is a str this is not a an image that I like. I have in myself of my identity that having a beard and such. I like it's like it's always startling a little bit, but it still went. Once I kind of settle in and I see myself, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that looks like me. Okay, let's keep going. So I have not been recording the videos. I'm behind on this project, and I'm trying to kind of figure out. Well, wait a minute. 
you know, what does this mean? I now have so much understanding of the, the singer Pink, who initially was bright pink all the time, and then I think just decided, ah, looked in the mirror and said, this is not me anymore. And usually she's white blonde now. So I'm feeling like maybe I, I could have learned a lot from her a long time ago, but I'm learning it now. And so as I've been trying to, to make sense of this dichotomy of a pink path while not being pink, of course, it, obviously it's not about the color pink because that would be a very narrow demographic of people that I would be able to work with. You know, only those who dye their hair pink. While I'm sure a awesome, fascinating, beautiful group to work with is, is a smaller uh, niche than I'm hoping to, to work with. So it's not about the color pink. It's about what the color pink represents to me. And to me, it has always been about, first of all, that confrontation of societal norms, that, that challenging of what the exterior world is telling you you should do and giving yourself permission to do what you are and be who you are. And so it's first that confrontation of expectations, societal norms that do not serve you. Two, it's always been about love. It's been about all the, the loving connections that red has without the aggression that red has. It's also, to me, it's always had a kind of a sexy vibe to it and a whimsical vibe to it. And over the years, I've always explained this when, when people are, I'm explaining pink and I always end it with, and we're all pink on the inside. And so it's, it's so beautiful that as I'm struggling with this, this out of sync color spectrum dilemma of mine, this pink path, which is a path towards truth. It's not a path towards anything, it's a path inside. It's a path to your inner truth. And this pink path is led me to this current place, which is not pink, at least as a color. So I'm, I'm just kind of giddy with the, the poetry of it all as I'm committing to this pink path while being the least pink in terms of the color spectrum that I've been in you know, 15 years. However, I do feel very aligned with my inner pink, with my truth, with the whimsy and the sexy and the fun and the love and the, the courage to follow my inner truth despite exterior expectations. At this point in my life, the exterior expectations are perhaps even more about the branding that I've created for myself than the societal norms that I had to kind of fight against and struggle to have courage to break out of when I was younger. Now it's my own prison of expectations that I need to, to challenge myself with. So I feel like there's this big cosmic laughter track happening for uh, whatever divine spirits are, are watching me figure this all out and I'm laughing too. It is a, a treat and a joy to walk this pink path. And while the pink path is, you know, this specific coaching program, this three month program that I'm starting one up in January, if you would be interested in working intensely with me for three months, but it's also, it is the underlying journey of everything that I've been doing this entire time. Hugnation is a part of the pink path. And you can follow along with me, walking this path of personal growth and our personal truth every week at one o'clock as we do these live broadcasts. Or you can check out the archive on YouTube or iTunes. And there's tons of archives. And I say that partially because as I'm asking people to step up and work with me one-on-one, -on -one, and commit financially and energetically to something big, I also want to make sure that I'm not hard selling anyone. And if it's a financial stretch, I don't want to say I, I only value you if you can afford to work with me. No, check out the Hug Nation archives, tune in live, 
comment on anything. I, I'm, I, I, this pink path is broad and deep. And if it's leading you to a point where you want to work intensely and, and really go deep with yourself and with me, then please reach out and let's make that happen. Who knows? Maybe you'll dye your hair pink or white or follow that inner compass to wherever you're supposed to be. Ah, so thank you for being on this journey with me. Thank you for sharing your light. No matter what color it is, it helps illuminate my path and everyone's path. You are the medicine the world needs. I love you. I just finished up a three month coaching program with five individuals called The Pink Path. It's the first time I've ever put together a program like this. It's the first time I've ever worked one-on-one -on -one intensely with people and it's been so incredible, so rewarding. And so much so that I'm, I'm doing another round starting in January. Honestly, this was the first time I'd done it and I, I believed in it, but I didn't know what the results would be. But it's been fantastic and the people uh, that took the journey with me I think have been transformed. Here is a little clip from Lynette's video diary from her last week. You asked us to say a few comments about the Pink Path and how it has been for us. The thing I've learned the most is that um, the greatest gift that I have to give is to be myself. That, that very elusive thing I'm supposed to be doing and the thing I'm supposed to be, you know, I'm here on this planet to do, um, is really to just be myself and, um, flaws and all and, uh, allow myself to, um, connect with people and share my self and my gifts and my talents and my creativity. And, um, if I can just be myself, um, that is a gift to share that with the world. Um, I spent a lifetime, I think, trying to be the person that I think everybody wanted me to be or wants me to be. This program has been one of the most important and life-changing things um, for me. Um, I'm not sure that uh, I knew what I wanted to get out of it so much. I just knew it was, it seemed like the right thing at the right time. And um, I'm really glad that I took a leap of faith. So the pink path is about figuring out your truth. It's about figuring out how much of this human experience that you're having is influenced by external pressures, guilt and shoulds and obligations, and how much of your experience is being informed by something inside. And that discernment is the pink path. That discernment of figuring out who I am what do I have to give to the world? And how can I do that from a place of joy and ease? So if that is something that you are headed towards or looking for more of, and you wanna go deep and intense with me for 12 weeks, three months, please reach out and let's see if, uh, if this next round of the Pink Path would be a good fit for you. Are you ready to take a leap and shine your light and change the world with me? Apply today.